right. This week, the gospel story at church has money in it. I want to thank Ministry for Children for sharing their thoughts on it, and I share those thoughts with you here today. So, here is some money. Sometimes you have some money, don't you? Maybe from an allowance or as a gift for a birthday. So, look, look at this money. Where did it come from? For example, this penny. This penny, say I got it from my mom, okay? But before my mom had it, she got it from somebody else. Maybe she got it from the bank or the store, but my mom certainly didn't make this money. So did it come from the bank? It came from the United States. It belongs to the United States because the United States made it. I mean, it says made in the USA on there, you know? It says it belongs to the United States. I guess, I guess that's who it belongs to. Um, money has faces on it. Um, this, this penny has Abraham Lincoln on it. So is the money his? What, what, what about this beautiful crisp $10 bill? Alexander Hamilton, you see that play? It has his face on it. So does it belong to him? Whose is it really? I mean, right now it's mine. It's, at least it's in my possession, but it's not gonna stay mine because quite honestly, I'm gonna go buy something fun with it. Um, and when I give it to somebody else, is it theirs then? Um, who, whose is it really? Even countries that aren't the United States have coins, have money with faces on it. So, so who does it really belong to? Here's a question for you. Where do you come from? We're all born, right? So we come from our families. Um, we have our mom, we have our dad, but some people are adopted. So their mom and dad may not be where necessarily where they originally came from. Um, maybe you think of yourself as coming from, the country, from a certain country. I'm an American. I'm from the United States of America. Um, or your state. I'm from the state of Illinois. Or your church. I'm from maternity BVM. But do I belong to them? Do I belong to the United States? Do I belong to maternity BVM? We are really all made in someone's image. Just like this coin is made in the image of Abraham Lincoln, we are made in the image of God. This is where we all really come from. God gives us our ultimate identity. He made us. We are his children. He loves us and he wants us to love him. He made us to live for him and to serve him. Today's gospel story is very similar. The church leaders asked Jesus some questions. They were trying to trick him, but Jesus being God, he's not so easy to trick, is he? Some people back then didn't think it was godly for people who believed in God to pay taxes to their government. That, there's a longer story and discussion there, but they were trying to trick him. So Jesus said to them, bring me a coin. Whose picture is on it? Well, they brought him a coin. Their coin had a picture of Caesar on it. So Jesus said, okay, that coin has a picture of Caesar on it. So give it to Caesar. It belongs to Caesar. Go ahead and pay those taxes. That's part of belonging to your country and following your laws. That was true in Jesus' time. It's still true today. But who do we belong to? We belong to God. Money doesn't stay with us long. We have it, then it goes on to somebody else. In the end, we really don't own it. It just temporarily passes through our possession. Maybe we buy a toy, maybe we buy some french fries, maybe we go someplace. But it doesn't own us either. We belong to God. We are made in God's image. We are God's most precious creation. He made us so that we could give our lives back to him and serve him. How? I belong to God and I am supposed to give my life back to him. How do I do that? Well, by loving his people and living the way he lived. He lived on earth for quite a while. 
and he was the perfect example of how we're supposed to live. Now, I can't be perfect, I can't be Jesus, but I sure can try my hardest to live my life the way Jesus did. He showed us, actually, how it's supposed to be done. What did he show us? Well, Jesus was kind to all people. We need to be kind to all people, not some of the people, not the people we feel like being kind to, not when it's convenient and easy to be kind, but we need to be kind to all people. Who should I be kind to? Well, how about the people in your family to start with? How about your family, your friends, your classmates, people you pass in the store? Smile at people, speak nicely to people, treat other people with respect because they're God's children too. The second thing Jesus taught us is to help people who need help. Jesus helped everyone. His family, his friends, he also helped strangers who had problems. We need to help people. You can help a fellow student who doesn't understand an assignment. You can help your family by picking up the toys around your house or clearing the table from breakfast dishes or setting out the dinner dishes where you can give food and other donations to people who don't have enough. As a matter of fact, Maternity BVM Church is going to be collecting food on Harvest Sunday. November 1st and 8th, we will be passing out flyers and collecting food and sharing that food with people who don't have enough. That's a wonderful way to live the way Jesus taught us. If your family wants to be one of those cars driving around, passing out flyers and collecting food, check on our maternity website and it'll explain to you how you do that. But there's lots of ways that you and your family can help people who need help. Thirdly, this is the hard one. Jesus forgave others. Jesus forgave everyone. We don't need to like what they're doing. But once again, we need to forgive them. Jesus even forgave the people who nailed him to the cross. It's hard to forgive. When I need to forgive people, I ask God and Jesus for help because it is so difficult. But I need to keep remembering that if I always talk about, think about what somebody else did badly, I'm not forgiving them. If every time somebody talks about Susie, I say, yeah, do you remember what she did to us? That's not forgiven them, is it? I don't have to like what Susie did, but I am supposed to forgive them. We can live for God by living the way Jesus, his son, taught us. We can live for God by reading the Bible, by going to church, by praying. So we give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. We do what we need to do for our laws and our government and to live here on earth in our country and city. But most importantly, we give to God what is God's by dedicating our lives to him and loving him by caring for those people who he cares for too. So now let's pray for a moment. Bow your head, close your eyes because it's a little bit easier to pay attention that way. And think about all the people that there are in the world. Ask God to help you to help them. Ask God to give you patience so you can forgive others. Ask God to give you strength for when it's hard to do what we're supposed to do. And together, let's say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may the Lord protect and keep us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, my little craft today, I thought that because it's getting to be autumn, I would collect some fall leaves. And I took all my fall leaves, which just went in the yard and picked them up, and I made little people into them. You can make your fall leaves into a lot of things, but I thought I would make them into little people 
Can you see my little guy? And it says at the top, I belong to God. That's what we talked about today. I belong to God and I'm dedicating my life to God. So I picked up some of God's creation and I just scotch taped them to a piece of paper. You could use glue stick, you could use other things you have in your house, but you could make a little fall person that says, I belong to God. 